up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sport topic, and today we're going to talk some football, Houston Texans football. Today, the Houston Texans fall to the Seattle Seahawks 33-13. We want to be honest, we want to be clear. It was a closer game, even though the score says 33-13. It was a closer game than the score indicated. I think it was a one-possession game going to the fourth quarter. It was a very competitive game, but you know the Houston Texans do what the Houston Texans do in the following, at the time, a 4-8 and eight team. Now, 5-8 and eight Seahawks team is in Davis Mills, First start back since giving the job back to Tyrod Taylor. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down. But before we do that, like I've been saying in the last couple of videos, the goal of the year is to reach 5K subscribers. We got to get to 5K by the end of the year. If we get to 5K, I got something special planned. I got something really special planned for a couple of my subscribers. Y'all don't want to miss it. Y'all want to be a part of this. But we got to get to 5K first. So send to your homeboy, your homegirl, your cousin, your brother, your sister, your neighbor, whoever. Let them know. Put them on game. And we got to get to 5K. Also, Hit them links in the description. Go in my description box. Hit them links. Yeah, follow me on social media. I go live sometimes on IG. So follow me on IG, Twitter. You got to follow me to know when I'm going to go live. And when I go live, you never know. I might bring one of y'all on. I might bring a couple of y'all on. And y'all be on live with your boy. But you got to be a part of it. You got to follow me first. So hit them links. Go in the description. Hit them links. Follow me. Also, like, share, subscribe so we can get to 5K. And we're going to get it going. So like I said, the Houston Texans fall to the uh, Seattle Seahawks, 33-13, and Davis Mills, first start back after giving the job back to Tyrod Taylor. And actually, not a bad day for Davis Mills. Davis Mills was 33 for 49, uh, 33 completions off of 49 attempts with a completion percentage of 67.3, had 331 yards, averaging 6.8 yards per attempt, one touchdown, no interceptions, was sacked twice with a quarterback rating of uh, 93.2. Rex Burkhead had 11 rushes for 40 yards. Um, Brandon Cooks was targeted 11 times, had eight catches for 101 yards. Nico Collins was targeted 10 times, had five catches for 69 yards. Russell Wilson was uh, had 17 completions off of 28 attempts with a complete percentage of 20 uh, a complete percentage of 60.7 with uh, 260 yards, averaging 9.3 yards per attempt. Had two touchdowns, no picks. No sacks, had a quarterback rating of 115.2. Uh, 115 Rashard Penny had 16 rushes for 132 yards, averaging 8.6 yards per carry with two touchdowns, with his longest uh, being a 47-yard, uh, I think it was a 47-yard touchdown he had at the end. Then uh, Tyler Lockett was targeted nine times, had five catches for 142 yards and a touchdown. DJ Metcalf was targeted eight times, had four catches, for 43 yards. DK really didn't really do too much, even though he had, he was targeted eight times. I think his first target, his first catch was either late in the first, late in the second quarter or early on in the second half. It took a while before DK really got going uh, in the game, actually. Um, even and he only ended up having like 43 yards. But the story of the game is Davis Mills. Davis Mills having 100, I'm mean, having 331 yards in his first start back from, uh, after giving the job to Tyrod Taylor. And it's his third 300 yard game. This is career high. I mean, his, his previous career high was he had 312 yards versus the Patriots back in week five. And then he also had another 300 yard game against the Rams, which was in garbage time. But if we want to be honest, Davis Mills played okay. He didn't play great. B played okay. The reason why I say he played okay, not great, because I know a lot of y'all talk about, no, you're, you're, that's cap. That's cap. Because uh, David Mill played great. No, he had a great start. We were 14 for 14 and 16 for 16 at one point. I know, I think uh, he was 14 for 14 in the first couple of drives. I think he was, no, yeah, he was 14 for 14 before he had his first incompletion because his first incompletion was his 15th pass attempt. So, yes, he started off the game great. Because if I'm not mistaken, when he was 14 for 14, he had 150 yards in that span. Um, and a touchdown, you know, he, he led him on, on the opening drive touchdown, something that's rare here for the Houston Texans. We don't get to 14. We don't get to uh, open and drive points, especially open and drive touchdowns. So he definitely did his job in the first drive of the game. In the beginning of the game, he played well. The reason why I say he played okay and not great is because down the stretch, he did not do and did not make the plays that need to be met. Because, like I say, it was a 19 to 13 game going into the fourth quarter, and the Texans had the ball. And once again, it's a combination of lack of talent and also play calling with the whole uh, um, uh, David, Cull David Culley and uh, Tim Kelly dynamic offensively that basically keeps 
stepping on the Texans' toes. Like I said, lack of talent, but yet and getting still, the Texans really can't do anything offensively because of play calling and philosophy. So it's not been talking about even with Deshaun Watson, even though last year Deshaun led the league in passing and had career high in the franchise, had most passing yards and most touchdowns from a, uh, from a quarterback standpoint. The philosophy of this team, this Bill O'Brien, because this, even though Bill O'Brien is in Alabama right now, Tim Kelly comes from the Bill O'Brien coaching tree. You're still running Bill O'Brien's offense. So because you're still running that type of offense, it still have some Parsons offense that I don't like. Not to mention, you don't have Hopkins no more. You don't have Will Fuller no more. And obviously, you don't have Deshaun no more. You don't get what you really, what you was getting back, you know, especially Deshaun's rookie year in 2017 when you was getting 19 touchdowns out of six games. You don't get that type of explosive. Now, Davis Mills, for what he did in today's game, being a rookie, I, I'll give you a hands up. I'm not, my gripe with Davis Mills, just like in that Patriot game, is not with Davis Mills. Davis Mills did what he, can, did what he was able to do. But at the same time, it doesn't scream franchise quarterback because when you need him to make plays, he did. Because like I said, it was not it was 19 to 13 going into the fourth quarter, and the Texans had the ball, got stopped. Seattle gets the ball back, scores a touchdown. Seattle, uh, Texas get the ball, stall out. Seattle gets the ball again, scores another touchdown. Now it's two minutes left to go in the game. Now you're down 33-13. And now the Texans are able to move the ball once again. They were able to move the ball in the beginning of the game when David Miller comes to shoot out, come out to shoot. And then at the end of the game, when you're down 33-13. What does that tell you? Honestly, what does that actually tell you? That tells you that the consistency is not there. And also tells you that you can catch somebody off go off go off surprise. You know, like when somebody gets hurt, and a lot of times this does happen with the quarterback, especially when somebody gets hurt and they come out there and ain't nobody prepared for the dude. And he goes out there, he scores a quick touchdown, or he does something real good, gets a good big play, or whatever the case may be, because the defense and the other team wasn't ready for it. That's what the opening drive and the first couple of drives showed you because if I'm not mistaken, they got touched down the first drive and on the second drive, they drove down there, got to the red zone and should have got a touchdown but ended up getting a field goal out, out of the situation. Then after that, they couldn't do anything. Remember, this team was scoreless in the second half. They scored 13 points in the first half and they couldn't do anything in the second half. They got 10 points in their first two drives and then they got a field goal right before halftime somewhere in the second quarter and then they didn't do anything the rest of the game. And then the last drive, they were able to move the ball and get into the red zone, but then time runs out and they weren't able to score. Right there shows you that when the defense hold in on the offense and the offense needs to score points because Seattle's out here scoring points, you couldn't do it. And the defense, today might have been one of the defense's worst games. I know the defense, uh, the uh, Bills scored 40 points. And then last week you were down, uh, you you ended up losing 31 nothing. But in in most of those games, the defense has done their job, just the offense kept them on the field too long because what the offense would do, quick three now, quick three now, turn the ball over, whatever the case may be, and the defense is on the field the whole game, and they eventually get worn down. That really wasn't the case in today's game. Seattle actually played well offensively, able to move the ball in, in certain spots, and they, it was more of they were basically imposing their will somewhere on the Texans. This was not a good game from the defense or from Lovey Smith. It wasn't a bad game because, especially being the Texas fan, we've seen worse last year, um, um, especially. But as far as this season was, I, what I've been saying so far about this season, it was one of their worst performances, in my opinion, because it wasn't it wasn't a normal situation where they've been holding serve and keep you in the game the whole game, and then they just end up being back broken because the offense wasn't able to pull up points. Not that, not that type of situation. The offense was able to move the ball. Because that's no one thing. Even though the offense wasn't able to put up points, the offense was able to move the ball in today's game. But they weren't able to put up points at the end of the day. That's what you, you have to put up points to win games. So in saying that, in, in saying that, like, like I said, you have to put up points to win games, the Texans need to do something offensively. They really do. Like, they, like offensively, is what's going to keep on holding this team back. 
if the, de the defense all season has been playing well enough to win, and even today's game, even though I say this might be one of their worst performances this season, they still play well enough to win because Seattle only had 19 points going into the fourth quarter, and your offense had the ball down six points. Not even down six points. The Texans score a touchdown in that situation. They up 20-19. to 19. Now your defense, because when the defense has a lead, the defense plays way better. They they juvenile. They 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 they, they play way better when they have a lead. Small lead it is. They play better when they have a lead than they do when they when they're in a deficit. They they can do certain things defensively, different uh different defensive packages and things of that nature. So they play better when they're doing that. But the offense still kept stubbing his foot. You had penalties. When you get into the red zone, to keep pushing it back, and that's the reason why I started getting another touchdown. You don't have to get field goals. Um, just a lot of situation. Also, that that, that 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 touchdown that CL had in the fourth quarter was not a touchdown. I'm sorry. That was not a touchdown. He got hit right on – he got hit right on the goal line. And they said, talking about that, that the ball crossed the plane. No, it didn't. His elbow crossed the plane. And his knee hit the ground. That ball never crossed the plane. And I kind of knew they were going to do that to the Texans because the camera angle that they showed was at the pile line. Because the pile line is a straight line, like a straight line. Like, see what my hand is? The pile line camera will be the straight line. It was kind of up angly. And you know, like how if you look at something in your face and you close one eye, how it looks in front of you, and you open and you uh, close and open your other eye, it's away from you. Like, see my hand right here? I know it's in front of my face, but with this eye, it looked like it's away. This eye, it looked like it's covering my full face. That's how like the camera angle was up and it was like from an angle. So you couldn't see the exact straight line from where the power line was. So from that angle, it looked like the football did cross the plane. I don't think that football crossed the plane. Not that I don't think. I know. That football never crossed the plane. It never did. But for some strange reason, they didn't have a power line camera today. The power line camera was kind of at an angle. It wasn't at a straight line like how it always is. And there's a power line camera on every power line. But for some reason, in today's game with the Houston Texans, there's not a power line. And then, this is another thing. How come today felt like a Seattle Seahawks home game? It did. Anytime Seattle had a big play, the crowd was screaming. And when you look in the stands, it seemed like, and all you seen was that turquoise and that and that uh, lime green color, not turquoise, the lime green and the navy blue and the gray. That's all you seen in the stands. You didn't see no deep steel blue, no bow red, no liberty white. You didn't see that. And then we already know what it is. So, Cal, I hope you've seen that, bro. I hope you've seen that. Because that's on you. The reason why the fan base is the way it is, is because of you. The reason why this team is the, the way it is, is the way it is is because of you and what you allow to happen. And you're going to have more home stands like that, more home games than not really home games. Because I can't wait to see how this Titan game is going to be at the end of the season, especially if that game, they need that game to win the division. Especially if they need that game to win home field advantage, to get home field advantage. I want to see, because I know for a fact, there's a lot of Titan fans who used to be Oilers fans that actually live in the city of Houston. Not to mention, I want to see if people travel. Because the reason why that game is going to be the most telling, the reason why that game is going to be the most telling is because if you go look at Tennessee, even when they win it, they don't have a full crowd. Even when they're successful, they don't have a full crowd. There's a lot of people in the state of Tennessee that's fans of other teams. There's a lot of people in Tennessee that are not really Titan fans. So I want to see if they can come here and overtake your house. That's more telling than a team like Seattle who has a superstar as a quarterback and has won Super Bowls. Or the Colts that has a good fan base and also has some fans here in Houston because their quarterback, their former uh, franchise quarterback is from, is from Houston. Or, you know, from the Cowboys or the Steelers, other marquee franchises, the Patriots and things like that, big name, big Green Bay, big big name franchises, they have a big fan base. They have a traveling fan base. The Titans don't really have a traveling fan base because they can't even sell out at home. I want to see if they are louder than you when they're in your house. Especially, that wound going to hurt even more because they used to be the Oilers. 
Like, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below if you haven't. Click that bell. Get more videos. I holla.